I'm Bernadine and welcome to the Bravely Vlog episode one. I'm going to be talking about tips, tricks and hacks for the guitar in this series. So today's episode will talk about chord changes and baby chords. Okay, so um, here is my guitar. I have a classical guitar with me today. Um, I started on a classical guitar, but I've moved on to other things now. But a classical guitar is a good place to start because of the nylon strings. They're not as hard to press as the metal strings on an acoustic or an electric. So they're a really good place to start. Um, so let's assume that you have learned a few chords and you're at the stage where you're starting to change between them. Um, so in my classroom, I often get the complaint that, oh, I'm so slow, it's too hard to change chords. <laughs> okay, so that, that's something I hear almost every day. Um, so here is how we get around that. And I'm gonna start with just a couple of chords. We'll look at C. A minor. Ah, uh, let's see, D minor and G. Okay, so the chord changes between these chords can be easy or it can be difficult. It just depends on how you do it. So let's say uh, I've got a C. And I want to move to A minor. The worst thing that you could possibly do is take your whole hand off and then start looking again for where to put your fingers. What I would recommend instead is playing C, leaving your index and middle fingers and simply lifting up your ring finger and placing it on the string underneath tall finger, your middle finger, right? So instead of picking up all of my fingers and then placing them back onto the guitar where I'd have to look again where they go, you would just move one finger like so. Magic, okay? So this is something that you can do without looking. I often see people staring intensely at their left hand while they're playing. But this is something you can do just by feeling, okay? So close your eyes and try and do it. C, and then move to A minor. Awesome. Okay, the next chord I was talking about was D minor. So in this instance, let's say I'm at A minor. I want to move to D minor. It's a little bit of a tricky one because all of the fingers have to move. They've all moved to a different place entirely. So my suggestion for moving between A minor and D minor is adopting D minor seven. Okay, why you say the reason is great. Because in D minor seven, instead of having the uh, third finger on the third fret, you actually have the first finger on the first fret, okay? So, it sounds a little bit different, but it's still quite pretty. So you can see that in that instance, instead of moving all three fingers to different locations entirely. My middle finger has lifted up and moved to the first fret of the first string, okay? So same as C to A minor, we've just moved one finger and everything else stays the same, okay? All right, so now let's look at G. So G is one of those examples where you can't really get around it, but you have to move everything. So 
So I always use my ring finger and my pinky finger as, as the guide fingers. And I place them on the third fret of the B and E string. Once those are in place, I can then feel around to put my second finger and first finger in the right place, okay? So, so far, I've got C, move one finger, it becomes A minor, move one finger, it becomes D minor seven, then using two fingers as the guide fingers, move to G, okay? So that is how I would start doing chord changes and just going very, very slowly. Um, I don't know, for a week, a few days until you get some muscle memory there. Um, so I'm also going to show you if that is a little bit advanced, some baby chords. Okay. So I don't know if baby chord is like a real thing, but it's something that I, I, uh, that's what I call it. Um, so let's say that's a bit of a stretch, uh, playing a C and, and all of that. You can instead, as you're starting out while you're getting your fingers to stretch, you can play the top three strings and place your index finger on the first fret of the second string. So there you have a baby C. So you're not playing the bass notes, but it's still pretty, okay? And then you can place the A minor. And then there's a D minor. Okay, and baby G is where you would place two fingers here and play the bottom four strings. Okay, so it's not going to sound as full because you don't have those bass notes there but it's a good place to start. Um, so please keep practicing those chord changes. And you'll be expert in no time. Next episode, we're going to look at easy strumming patterns. Thanks for tuning in.